Hi everyone, so let's continue our course. So this is basically the part three. Okay, so we have seen, as you can see, in the previous part, the parts two. So we have seen what is the dead motherboard, what is the cause of a dead laptop motherboard. <coughs> so basically, we have seen all this as you can see information is here okay and over here as you can see we have the motherboard power jack we have seen that the component that can cause a dead motherboards are so inductor like this one double inductor like this two fuse mosfet double mosfets fuse resistor and the diode okay so let's continue right now <coughs> our course so basically we have here sometimes instead of the fuse you can find one or more inductors of course in the input parts of the circuit of the charge circuit in the laptop you can find fuse here Okay, this is basically the DC in connector or the DC jack like this one. So <clears throat> sometimes you can find here fuse or inductor like this one or double inductor. Okay, so you can find one or more inductors that have the same purpose as the fuse protection of other circuits in the motherboard. You can also find one MOSFET or two MOSFETs we called it switches okay for example here we have an example okay so this is basically a mosfet the mosfet basically in the laptop motherboard you will find usually a mosfet with eight pins okay so four pins for drain as you can see here these pins are connected together so this is the drain and three source or three pins for the source and the other pin is for the gates okay <clears throat> so here we have basically the power jack or motherboard power jack over here so here we will get to the dc the 19 volt voltage it will goes directly to the drain of this MOSFET and after receiving the control signal in its gate it will lead the 19 volt to pass to the other side to the source okay <coughs> but sometimes you can find in some circuits or some laptops two MOSFETs okay so here the same working principle we have here the V in the 19 volt will goes directly to the drain of this MOSFETs and after receiving the control signal 19 volt will pass to this side as you can see then it will be applied to another MOSFET this time in the source of this MOSFETs okay and after receiving the control signal from its gate it will let the 19 volt to pass to the other side that's why we call it switches okay this is switches just it switch the 19 volt from one place to another from drain to source like in this example or from source to drain like in this example so we find this kind of MOSFETs in the beginning in the circuit in the charge circuit near to the power jack so please pay attention for this or to these MOSFETs because these MOSFETs can cause a dead motherboard okay so always if you have a dead motherboard after doing a visual inspection after checking the ports and connectors you should check the components near the power jack okay and the component near the power jack that can cause so the short circuit or a dead laptop motherboard are this component as you can see inductor fuse mosfet and fuse resistors okay this is basically the fuse resistor okay so let's continue right now let's see the fourth cause 
rocky default cause that can cause a dead laptop motherboard. <clears throat> so here we have a failed super input output IO. Okay, the ESIO. This is basically the SIO that we gonna study right now. So basically the SIO is the integrated circuit that controls the whole power in the motherboard. Okay, so it is also <coughs> so failed super IO is also can cause a failed and dead motherboard because it is the first responsible for the whole power in the motherboard. <coughs> Note that you can check the serviceability of the SIO IC using three methods. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you three methods. You cannot find these methods in other place. This is a very unique content for electronic repair basics channel. <coughs> So the first method by checking its heat. So plug. So by checking the heat using your finger or using any device like a thermal camera, for example, and check the heat of this IC. Okay. So plug the power adapter and check the super IO body using your finger or the thermal camera if you feel that the IC is very hot which means it is failed so the second method by checking the ceramic capacitors or PF capacitors near or around the IC those capacitors as you can see so if you find that any of that capacitors is shorted means 100% the east IOIC is damaged, you should replace it with another one with the same reference. So, in this point, I want to mention that around the east IO, you will find many ceramic capacitors. So, when you find, when you find a shorted ceramic capacitor, means it could be the ceramic capacitor, a shorted one, or do SIO. But when you find many capacitors around the SIO is shorted, means automatically the SIO is bad because, as you can see, these ceramic capacitors are connected to the ground in one side and connected to the SIO in the other side, as you can see, connected to the SIO in this side and to the ground in this side. Okay. That's why you should always check the serviceability of the ceramic capacitors. So the third method, by checking the inputs and outputs of the SIO using its data sheets, schematic and the multimeter. So basically to check any integrated circuit, not just the IC, you cannot check the integrated circuit like a diode or a MOSFET using the multimeter randomly. No, you should always, if you want to check the serviceability of any IC, including the super IO, you should use the data sheet and check the inputs of the IC. Of course, after powering in the IC, you should check the inputs and the outputs. For example, in the inputs, you can find Example, VIN 19 volts, enable signal, you can find 5 volts, okay, and some enable signals. You can find also the clock, and for example, in the output, you will get 3.3 volt or 5 volt. So, if the inputs are not correct, you cannot get the outputs. So to get the output, you should get all inputs, including enable signals, etc. Okay. So the picture below shows the ESIO and the laptop motherboard. So basically, here we have the ESIO, as you can see. So 
usually the SIO or the super input output IC, you will find it near the RCH and the BIOS. Okay, so this is the I the super IO here. Basically, we have several capacitors around it. Okay, and those components are basically resistors. Here we have diode, as we can see. This is the cathode, and here we have the anode. We have this one. Uh, basically yes this is and this one this is not a diode this is a 10 tenem capacitor we called it 10 tenem capacitor okay so here basically we have the positive terminal and the negative terminal this kind of capacitor are polarized capacitor okay So there are many types of SIO. Note that the SIO is usually a square shape, as you observe in the picture below. So here we have some types of SIO that you can find in your computer or laptop. So the fifth cause is the basic input-output system, the BIOS. This is a very important part where we gonna study the basic input output system its schematic etc okay how to reprogram it and it's etc so this is the basically the fifth cause that we gonna see in the part number four okay so please guys don't forget to like the video and for anyone who not yet subscribed to, to my channel i invite you to subscribe in order to get any new video okay so thank you very much and of course for anyone who want to join me in the patreon page you are very welcome in the patreon page i basically upload in a daily basis many unique content including videos including texts including schematics laptop schematics including many tips, tricks, and secrets on how to be an expert in terms of repairing laptop motherboards. So thank you very much. And of course, I will put the link of this article in the description box and of course, do my website link. So thank you very much and see you tomorrow.